The purpose of this tutorial is to introduce you to the use of radial gradients within Inkscape. Gradients are often used to show highlights and shadows within a drawing and through those to suggest three-dimensionality and depth. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to draw a circle. I'm going to hold down the control key to constrain that so it's a perfect circle. Now that is our solid fill. To apply a radial gradient we'll usually go to the fill and stroke dialog box which is control shift F and we'll apply our radial gradient. Now to my way of thinking the default for radial gradients, which is the full color in the center and transparency on the outside, is backwards for what we want most of the time, so we need to invert that. We see here that it creates our radial gradient, or our gradient rather, 3894. That's a random number, and unfortunately in Inkscape we cannot name our gradients, although that would be useful in complex diagrams and drawings. So that's the name of our gradient. We can edit it and we find that our gradient is comprised of two stops. Full yellow, which is the center, and transparent yellow, fully transparent yellow, which is our second stop, which is the perimeter or the circumference of our circle in this case. So we want to invert these so that we can create a highlight and suggest a sphere. So I'm going to take the alpha channel, which is our level of opacity or transparency. We're going to make that one opaque and come up to our first stop and do the reverse. We're going to make that one fully transparent. And now we get this effect as if a light were shining on the center of it. But very seldom does the light shine directly from the same direction we're looking, so we need to move that gradient. And to do that we need to pick the node select tool. Now we see our gradient represented here by these two arms and by this center dot. So this controls the center of the gradient. So we can move that up there to suggest a highlight near the top. These arms on the other hand that are controlled by these handles control the circumference of our gradient. Now anytime that you need to come back to editing that gradient, you simply come back and select your object with the node select tool and your gradient handles return. That's uh, the very basics of how we would create the highlight for suggesting a sphere. But of course if there's a highlight there's also going to be a shadow. Now one of the ways to create a shadow would be to do this. I'm going to do this very quickly because it's not the subject of our but I'm going to go control D to copy that. There's a second sphere. Control D to copy that. There's a third sphere. I'm going to make that third sphere a different color so you can see what I'm doing here. And that third sphere I'm going to make a fair bit larger. I'm going to drag it over top of our second one. Shift click on the one that's now underlined. Go to path. Take a difference. That leaves us with that little sliver which we can then color either a gray or a black. Now as I say this has nothing to do with radial gradients but this is another way to create our shadow. We position that near the bottom here. Obviously that's a pretty harsh shadow so we go to our fill and stroke dialog box for that object and we'd first really reduce the level of opacity of that object and then fairly significantly blur it. And there we have one means of creating a shadow. And that works fine. But for the purposes of this tutorial we want to show you that you can also create a similar effect with controlling your radial gradient. So we're going to click on radial, we'll click on our object. There's our gradient. We're going to edit it. And we've got the two stops, our start point and our end point. We're going to add 
two more stops. Let's just look what that looks like when we see our edit nodes. We see those stops represented here by these handles or sliders. Now what we want to do in this case is we want to create a black shadow at the bottom. So here's our stop that represents our transparency. That's the center of our gradient. And here's the outside of our gradient. So I want to go to this outside. I'm going to go to my CMYK representation for my color. And I'm going to drag that towards black. Now that's very drastic. So we're going to pull the horns back on that one a little bit. And we're also going to create some level of transparency with that. Now that doesn't look very desirable just yet. But here's what we're going to do in between. We're going to take these stops and we're going to move those towards full yellow. This one not quite so much. All right, that's still not looking very good. So what we need to do now is increase the radius of our fill. And I'm going to bring these sliders in to focus that highlight again. And so now what you see what we've got is something a little more subtle. Our black now has been pushed to the very perimeter and it's not even really all that visible anymore. We could bring it in to make it more visible if you want. By the way, we can also tilt this gradient. I forgot to mention that. Now probably not very visible on a screencast, but essentially we have created, let's get rid of these dialog boxes or cluttering things up, we have created a gradient that has some suggestion of shadow down at the bottom. It's fairly subtle. Subtle is what we want. Okay. As I bring those in it becomes less subtle because I'm bringing that last black stop closer in. There you can see it a little more clearly. One of the advantages to this method is that as we tilt change our gradient angle this flows with it. So if I move this over you can see that now that shifted over two. So we're actually controlling the highlight and the shadow together. And that's a little tutorial on how you would use radial gradients to create both highlight and shadow.